What's good? It's your girl Angie Rose. I'm live with Rapsilla, and this is Pen Game 101. Dread? Uh, yeah. Check the pen game, check the pen game. Got your favorite rappers going insane. Then we run the gauntlet like the end game. So what you waiting for? Check the pen game. What's going on, everybody? It's Justin Sarachik, editor-in-chief of Rapzilla.com, and I am here with the Pen Game 101 crew. We have Elijah Matos. We have Cutright. And no, that is not Luke DiMarzio, who is not here today, but it is the return of the great Frederick Hicks. Mm. <laughs> Luke was too good for us today, but Freddie was like, I'm just good enough, so put me in coach. <laughs> so we're... We're here today and we're gonna have Angie Rose on here. She dropped her album, Unstoppable, on January 15th. It's an incredible album. It's filled with Latin vibes, it's filled with hip hop, it's filled with the sounds of New York. And I know Angie pretty well. I know that she is a freestyle beast and she definitely has a lot to say on culture and different subjects. So hopefully she brings out her A game today. I know you will, Angie. So before we do that, of course, we're gonna hit it with the pen where we dive into the pen of the artist and we talk about their project. So we're gonna lead it off with the first track. So the first track is Meet Me, Heaven on Earth. The album kicks off with this. It's really the perfect intro into what Angie Rose is about. The, the song's music video is required viewing in order to understand her story. The beginning features visuals of New York City. Then once the music starts, you're hit with the Latin vibes, the dancing, the boxing, the rhythm the nuances of tapping out beats on the walls at crowded family get-togethers with the music blaring. And uh, Eli, I know you know what that's like as, as a Latino in the city. Got so, sabes. Tu sabes. <laughs> so what many non-Spanish speakers miss is the drops of Spanish intercut like those jabs and the punches you see in the video. The atuva as ver cielo en la tierra. I'm sorry, I, I'm really trying to learn Spanish with my babble. <laughs> Something, which means something to the extent of you're going to see heaven on earth. Um, then she's showing us the party of being saved, which is further pushed by the interlude repeating, Seguime si sigo a Dios, or follow me if I follow God. So it's a great segue song for people looking for some hype. And then they get hit with the gospel once they're kind of sucked into that song and they hear the rest of the album. So that is Meet Me, Heaven on Earth. So the next joint is Angels, a.k.a. Selah. Right now, this joint bangs like West Coast rappers in the nineties. I mean, like the beat sounds super syncable. Like I can see this being used in a slow motion scene for the Charlie's Angels reboot. Like while they getting ready for the final battle after they found out that the final villain that blew up their headquarters is actually retired Angel Cameron Diaz. Boom! Right. I need my thinking about this drops, bro. Oh yeah, bro, I'm deep. I mean, I mean it, it, it came to me, it was like a vision. So tell Angie I need 7% when she get this sick, you know what I mean? Nah, but this joint was full of wordplay and quotables from top to bottom. It said, God dropped the pin down and now I'm on a map. What? Said, and that was the first two bars of the record, kicking the door, waving song 44, Brrr, you know what I mean? The hook was he too. And this was a very, very, very dope record. I got not a monster. I was originally confused by the title, but then once I listened to it, it made a lot more sense because um, the song was definitely energetic and there's a lot of elements of music going on within the same time. Now, I don't want to get too deep and be like the beat, you know, wasn't necessarily a monster of a beat. You had to just understand the beat, like to understand the monster. I'm not going to do all that. It's dramatic. But um, what I will say is that the it gave it it, it bleeds motivation. And the line, you know, I'm a dive in the valley, in the valley, excuse me, of the shadow of death, um, hits a lot more different because usually people say they're walking, and that's the Bible verse, of course. But um, Angie Rose is implying and stating that she, you know, faces danger head on, and you know, he's like, "Yo, you crazy? You wild? You a monster for doing that? Like, yo, I'm not a monster. I just, you know, she has faith in God." Um, and the whole track feel of this track also coincides with the theme of being tough and enduring because the beat in itself was not necessarily gritty, but it was one of those beats that was like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, not the song to play patty cake over, you know. Next track is exposing an entirely different side of Angie's strength as an artist. 
It's not just the confidence that we saw in Meet Me and Fight and uh, Fight Like a Man, which she released way ahead of time, or uh, Angels or Not a Monster. No, no, no. There's an entirely different side of her strength, which we see in Pain Inside My Eyes through her vulnerability. So Angie's got really powerful lines here like, I ain't trying to be your pastor, man. I'm trying to be your friend. The struggles that I'm mastering, I'll share them where I can. So there's really this sort of engagement with her vulnerability. It's not just meet me at the party. We're not just trying to have some fun. Let's also be real here. Let's have some real conversations. Uh, the most poignant line of the entire track is when Angie says, if I'm finna die, then I'm dying like the faithful. Look up to the sky, show God that I'm grateful. So there's a sort of visual parallel there to Angie willing, being willing to die for the gospel and also the moment when Jesus is on the cross and saying, uh, Father, I surrender my spirit. This idea of like, man, if I'm going to die, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it, giving myself unto God. Behind the scenes, Justin also points it out, a sort of connection between the Columbine line and uh, the story of the two young girls who uh, were shot, who proclaimed Jesus until um, they're passing. Uh, so they're, we're gonna, probably going to get into that a little more later on once Angie's on the show. But um, ultimately, Angie's also just focusing in on this idea like nothing is going to take her away from the father. Nothing is going to take away her faith. She is entirely committed to this thing, no matter how dangerous, no matter how painful the circumstances are. So the next song after that was Crying in a Jaguar. Now, I really like the vulnerability in the record. I, most parents want better uh, than they have for their children. And for her to be shedding tears in that car was her finally reaching that place of financial stability that her parents would desire for her to be. I felt that for real. Um, also her switching it up and replacing the second verse with the audio of her sharing part of her testimony was heartfelt and refreshing. And as an artist, we can be so caught up in trying to show the power of our pen overlooking the power and the simplicity of us sharing our testimony. But that part alone made this one of my favorite songs on the project. I really messed with um, Unstoppable, also known as In Parentheses, Do It Again. Um, because the whole song is something that I originally thought was cheerful and joyful. Um, it kind of served as the opposite for Not A Monster because it is as if she just got out of the valley of death. And it's saying that she is unstoppable and that she will do it again. But after revisiting the song, and I realized that there were some underlying themes within it about where she's from not being in the best condition. And um, I did some more research thanks to Eli, and I found out the kind of foundations that she had. It made me realize that her theme of being unstoppable is, you know, nothing is going to stop her from wanting to, the, from wanting to see the change that she wants to have happen in real life. So with what she wants to have happen in Puerto Rico and New York, even though that COVID's happened and the world is shut down in X, Y, Z, she's still going to do what she has to do because she's unstoppable and she'll do it again. I think you hit the nail right on the head um, as far as content, but musically, this joint was flames too. Like I honestly couldn't understand the first verse due to the language barrier, but that second verse, she went off. I mean, this was another one that I felt like could be used for film or television, straight montage feel, like the main character finally sees she's the beauty in herself. She took off her glasses, let her frumpy hair down, went got her hair did, went to the store, trying on outfits, and she get all beautified, and they walk down the street like, damn, you know what I'm saying? The vibrant energy of the record jumps out at you, transporting you to a rooftop somewhere where the water's blue, the sand is white, and the party never stops, Hey. Eh? Now, this record gave me Selena vibes, type J-Lo too, you know what I mean? What speaks to the Swiss Army knife like adaptability that Angie possesses. You go, girl. I love what you guys said about Unstoppable, but let me, let me remind you that there is one last track on this album, and it's Seven Gold Chains, and this is your final reminder for this project that Angie Rose can still rap, and she can still do it incredibly well. She also brings up this imagery of this, this transition from seven gold chains to seven gold rings. I think that's a really cool uh, symbolic reference, the idea of like the chains being the things that would bind you, becoming the symbol of your authority, right? So if we think about the way rings are represented in the Bible, there's a signet, I don't know how to pronounce it, signet, signet, something like that. The point is that rings were often used to represent authority. So it's this idea of like, man, the things that used to be uh, holding me back, that's exactly what's pointing me uh, as this sort of symbol of power now. She also has an insanely sick literary reference for all our book nerds out there to The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, which is all about the story of this young shepherd boy named Santiago, who he goes into the Sahara Desert in search of an incredible treasure. He meets all these people. I'm not gonna spoil it entirely for you, but 
he ends up finding it in exactly the place he started. So I'd love to ask Angie a little more about what elements of the novel inspired the project and uh, dive into some books with her too, not just the music. So all of that to say that is the Unstoppable Project, which what we didn't mention is Unstoppable is sort of this theme that Angie Rose goes through. She has her Unstoppable Foundation. Of course, she has Unstoppable the Part 1, basically, because the Unstoppable on this project is Part 2. So it's just this whole thematic element of her life that she has continued to exude, that she is unstoppable. Puerto Rico is unstoppable. The Bronx is unstoppable. New York City is unstoppable. Her God is unstoppable. Um, so it's it's this awesome theme. I, I wonder if we'll continue to get these unstoppable tracks throughout the course of Angie's career. I'm not sure, but now it is time to welcome Angie Rose to the Pen Game 101, and we're going to play some games. So here we go. Here's that fade, the famous fade. All right, everyone, so you just listened to the pen portion of Unstoppable. Well, now we have the actual artist in front of us, Angie Rose, and we are going to throw her to the wolves. She's going to play the game. She's going to answer the 101. Of course, Unstoppable has been out already since January 15th. And uh, we're going to learn a lot more. And first, before even any of that, before we get into the good stuff, Angie Rose, what's up? How you doing? How you feeling? <laughs> all go. is well. All is well. Feeling good. Feeling good. Great to be here. All right. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see how that stands. Cut right. Uh oh. We're okay. Gonna... We about to see. We about to see. <laughs> Angie, I heard that you was one of the New York weekend sun that light like a beacon, lay your hands like a deacon on the weekend. So we bring you in too. The build the bar. Lion did. He said we was wolves, bro. I'm tired of you calling me wolf, bro. I'm a lion. Ow! Well, that's still near Wait. Me. Anyway. <laughs> but don't correct me, Freddie. I'm in the middle of a build the bar. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, Angie, so the way that this goes, I'm going to give you a word. You got to give us some bars with the word. It could be two bars, four bars. I heard, you know, that you was a freestyle phenomenon, something like it. At least that's what LL told me. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to, trying to find out what's Man. All right, are you ready? All right, all right, so the first word. I think so. The first word is chopped cheese. Ah, I'm from the boogie, you know we eating the chopped cheese. A little cold, you know I had to go stop freeze. Make it make sense? Do I keep on rhyming? Show them how I do it when I stay on time and I got a cadence in the flow. When I give it to God, I had to chop cheese on a roll and I give it to God. Even the homeless man, that could be his name. If I make it up, then I got to kill it insane. I got to spit it with flames. I got to do it. Insane. All right, I'm done. I don't know. Hey, 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 talk about, that's what I'm talking about. Yo, the ladies been killing this joint, bro. All right, yo, so, all right, right. so juggernaut. Huh. They talking about the juggernaut. I'm a superhero, but I heard that you probably not. I got to do it how I do it. I give it up to the king. It's ironic how I'm single, but I kill it in the ring. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Oh, that was good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That, that might have been, that might have been one, of, one of the best lines we've had on this whole show. Right oh, there. Hey. I, I right, that, that was up there. That, that was, was crazy. Up Ooh. there. Okay. All right. All right. Cardi uh -oh. B. Mm. I'm from the boogie, like my sister Cardi B. If we in the club, you can meet me at the party, see? I got a record, that's the name of the song. Let me show you how I do it, get them singing along. I could pull up on the block, let me spit it nonstop. I mean, that's the name of the project. Let me do it off top. I see you with the putting that like, like the subway people with the chain, chain. I see you though. I get it. Don't get me hyped, bro. Don't get me hyped. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I, yo, Captain Marvel. Mm. Captain Marvel, what a story to tell. I think this guy really knows his superheroes well. Maybe I could give him a little bit of a Pixar, send him out to Disney. I could show him with a Pixar, how I take the picture and they say I'm a model. They said they got my pics in the group chaps. I got a problem with it. <laughs> Let me get my pics back. <laughs> Let me get the flips back. Let me show you how we do it when I got my ribs back. I don't eat meat right now. I'm on a diet. Show them how I do it when I'm in the ring and light it. I don't know. We talking talk? I guess I'm Chuck and Chuck. If it's Captain Marvel, then I could be Mrs. Walt. 
I don't know. That was the end of that. That was <laughs> this fun, hey. You could have, oh man, you were so you could have said like the whole I could have spun it, but I was like you could have went. Here we go, she hug. I couldn't think yeah, of nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Why. I was like, see with the word play, play like did you when he said take you with the Pixar to show you where the Pixar? Yeah, that was nice. Should you see where the clip saw the it's you know what I mean? Okay. Don't do that. Uh, you know and she, hey, and go she's go. got a teleprompter in front of her. All that's right. that's what <laughs> All right. It's rolling on. All right, yo. Encyclopedia Britannica. Nah, just in Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Britannica would be crazy. Mm. Encyclopedia. I got the word. They got social media. Mm. Show you how I do it. I spit it like Wikipedia. Get mm. up on the essence and lessons and flip them easier. Cause they be mm. lying in the talk. They go through with the edit. Show you how I do it when I come and behead it. Like, you know, John mm. and Baptist, I like to spit that line. So I can show them where they do it and I get them back rhymes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take ah, yeah. We might, we might, we might just right. have to end the show. Yo, this Hall of Fame status out here. Okay, okay. Oh Last one. Since we from the X, we got to do it. Terror Squad. Oh, Terror Squad, that's the word? Terror Ooh. Squad is the word. Uh, all right. All right. Sorry, that's it, that's the thing. Uh, all right. Yeah, all right. Shout out to Fat Joe, we talking to Terror Squad. I heard they was really afraid. That's the Terror God. Wait, you get it? Je Jerry Lorenzo, Fear of God. I came with the squad and I gave him the Terror Squad. It's the Fear of God, because I got respect for my father. You want me to sing it in Spanish, I could sing it out like a lava. Keep it easy, keep it short, player. Show you how I do it. I'm making up lines, but I promise I can influence. Terror Squad, I pray they got the fear of God. Show them how they do it when I kill it with the Terror Squad. It don't make sense, but it make change, you feel me? Oh yeah, see you gotta pull out that terror card, that terror yeah. Ooh, wow. That's wow, yeah, that's how you. Right nice. there, you the Terror Squad nice. when I'm pulling that terror card. Ah! Wow. <laughs> Yo, yeah. just tuck that away. Just tuck that away. Use that I later. Will, Use bro. that later. It's right here. I put it right here. <laughs> like, so wait on. I'm ready. <laughs> hey, yo, you wow, been, it's been, been, been a been minute. Tabby, yo. you know what I'm saying? You in the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Dropping all the flame. Congratulations. Salute to you, Angie Rose. I see ain't no thorns on your stems. You did it. How you <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, now we were we were we were a little afraid. We're like, I don't know, is is Angie is Angie really up to date on her freestyle game? You know, she it has. Not. All right. This was fun though. This was fun though. You, so you got me, I'm about to go back. Oh, I'm so not have to. That felt crazy. My heart is like, I feel like I'm back in the block. I gotta get back on that. That was fun. I get them ciphers in front of the bodega. Hey. You know what I mean? My Taking God, the heads off, it. Line, line them up I like the barbers. Oh, you want a little tape up? Bah, bah, bah. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah, stop. Y'all got me feeling like I'm on the block. Chill. Chill is Rapzilla. We, we trying to get, we, we want that Angie from the block. Okay, that's the, that's, here. that's the Angie oh, we want. With the one that you got, she just uh, Angie from the block. From the block. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. That was incredible. All right. Man. So sorry, e Eli. Eli's gonna gonna bring down the mood a little bit, and he's got <laughs> he's got a, a trivia game for you. Let's let's uh -oh. see let's see what you know. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of a cool down here, Angie. We know that you called yourself the Puerto Rican chick from the Bronx who loves Jesus and hip hop in that order on this project. So I had to ask you some questions about your homes, New York City and Puerto Rico. So when you're ready. Uh -oh. I got 10 questions lined up for you. Sheesh. Do I have to like answer them really fast? You will get extra points if you do. I don't even know if we're doing a point <laughs> system, but you know what? If you do, sure. You we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just say like, extra yep. point. Yep, we'll just yep. throw it up. <laughs> All, right, All right, boom. First question. Name five movies or TV shows that take place in New York City, but at least one has to be in the Bronx. Oh boy, I'm not good at this um <laughs> at all wait no i don't know coming to america right right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um marvel movies i know they was in new york they was fighting it was like mm -hmm. what was that um uh, avengers 
Come on, where's the superhero man? Come on. Right. Girl, you got it, girl. You said so you got it. Okay. You got it. Keep going, right. keep going. How keep going. many? How many? I gotta do five. Five. Um, and one in the Bronx. One in the Bronx. Wait, Carlitos way, right? Yep. That's gotta be the boogie, right? All right. <laughs> right? Carlitos, Brigante's from the Bronx, right? All right. Yo, I'm not good at this. Two more. Um, what's that movie? Uh, where Rico Cameron was Rico. What's that movie? Ah, yeah, yeah, everybody knows that movie. You can't yeah. tell me the name. All right, wait, wait. Yo. That's crazy. I'm not good at movies. All right, so that movie, y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. Don't mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about. All right. Um. <laughs> oh my God, five. What's one more movie in New York? Uh, that was Advocate. Yeah, they was in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you not say Bronx I'm Tale? Bronx Tale. It's in the name. I'm embarrassing. I was, I was sweating. I even got a song Jackie Chan Bronx. rumble in the Bronx. You Bronx know what I'm saying? Yo. <laughs> what legendary DJ is often credited with starting rap music in the Bronx during the 1970s? The, the best one. <laughs> That's the best one. I don't know. <laughs> DJ, um, dang, I don't know, bro. Right, I know right. they was on like 174, though. It's uh, DJ Cool Herc. Tough. In the Flash and the Furious Five, bro. I just, I'm gonna have to go watch some hip hop docs. To the Cold Crush, bro. They did it to the Cold Crush. All right, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. Let's see, let's see, let's see it. What is the nickname for the East Harlem neighborhood largely settled by Puerto Ricans? Oh, El Barrio, no? El Barrio. That's yeah, it. okay. Okay. Number four, name three women of rap or women rap groups of any era from New York City. Three women rap groups from New York City? Three women um, rappers or women rap groups? Either one. Oh, okay. We got Lil' Kim, um, Sutton Pepper. We got um, Nikki. That's three. That's already okay. three. You got it. Not Queen Latifah. You ain't throw Queen Latifah. I mean, I was just saying, I'm not good at trivia. If you knew how much I'm sweating right now, I'm like, oh, he gonna act next. Like, so, yeah, go cut, ahead, go ahead. cut. He had Queen Latifah in there, and I had a feeling, I just had a feeling that that was wrong. So I looked it up. Queen Latifah was born in Newark. Hey. She would claim NYC uh-huh. anyway. That's what I told Justin. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. You could have said uh, you had Azalea Banks. Um, Cardi B. Bro, why, why, bro, why, Remy, why could do that, bro? Like, don't put a Z in the Ma, list. Remy don't Ma, put a Z Remy. Remy. Don't put the, okay. MC, yeah. MC Light. If you want to throw it back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And why? All right. This the one, fuck? even I didn't know before like a year ago. What is Soho short for? I have no idea. South of Houston Street. No, it's not. Apparently, I don't. Pfft. That's, That's crazy. I don't even want to know that. I thought it was cooler. <laughs> it's cool. Wow. Shout out to Houston Street. Shout out okay. to Houston. All right. Now we know. Houston? How, it's a Houston? Is it? Is it? I'm going to let you I'm not going to say that. No, no, no. It's, it, looks like it looks like yeah. Houston. It looks like Houston, but it's pronounced Houston. That's, That's how the train says it. If the train wild. says it, it's right. That's true. Houston okay. Street. All right. All right. It's okay. It's cool. It's cool. You know, <laughs> cultural differences. <laughs> Number six. Did salsa music emerge in Puerto Rico or New York? I heard New York, but my heart wants to say Puerto Rico. It's actually. But I heard New York. That's crazy. It's New York, but it was started. Yeah, we by- are fire. I'm saying. What? Greatest uh, city in the world. Insane. All right. We're going to switch to a little bit more about PR. Name three cities or towns in Puerto Rico. Manati, Culebra, Aguadilla. Ah, easy. What is the name of the tiny frog native to PR? Coqui. El Coqui. Which indigenous tribe are Puerto Ricans descended from? Taino. That's, all right, last question. What is the nickname of Puerto Ricans from New York? Boricua. Don't get me high, bro. I had New Yorican listed, but Boricua, I'll, I'll take Boricua. Oh, you took Boricua. Boricua. Ah, ah, ah. I see you, Cut. I see you. Right. Where, where, where are you now, Cut? You live in Charlotte? Yeah, man, but I was dead in the middle with little Italy, little, no, 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 He's from Charlotte, but, yeah, but uh, he was born in Queens, so he, he, can, he can hold it. He can hold it down. Yeah, <laughs> I love the vibe. All right, so our last game is the Run It Back game. Uh, Freddie is going to dive into some old Angie Rose lyrics. 
and you got to see if you can keep the song going. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> working hard, make them think I'm hardly working. Cause when you're digging deep, it means the come, I mean, up, is come up is for certain. Ah, ain't no vendetta in these metaphoric rhymes. I guess them trips around the world can really change your state of mind. Um, often caught up in a parable of words, but my mind be spitting ashes, so my mind is spitting verbs. I'm around many, but I'm known by a few. Flow is good in plenty, but these words so few. That's really because I never play with fire. If my words is life and death, then I'm going to use them to inspire. Ooh, wow. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's, it's fire. You got it. It's fire. Obviously. <laughs> you know the rest of the words. All right, that was wow. good. That was quick. Um. All right, the next one is, I'm pretty sure you're going get to this, get this quickly now. Oh, yeah, it's a family affair. We go back like in my city with the coats I had coats to I had to vent. Oh, yeah, unaware. This is something to be grateful for. Grandma <laughs> said, say the right thing. We couldn't take no more. I'm good. I went out full. Yo, you know, no big deal. Thought I cursed on that ad lib. I just had to throw it in. It was really funny. But I said, Grandma, I'm full. Ooh, la familia. Funny we look different, but somehow they so familiar. Please don't trip if my brother is the target guaranteed y'all miss because I'm running a hundred. We got the love that they wanted. If I take a flick, if I get tagged, I'm going to scream out I'm not it. I'm not it. That's because I'm, I'm still a it. child at heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're sitting in the sun, no taking shots in the dark. I don't remember the rest. I think, I think that was that was good enough. Is that enough? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If, if you were that good at making up words, I was pretty confident now that, that you'd be able to know your <laughs> own stuff. That's why I, I got my second. I was yo. like, come on, man. I was like, I get yo, no yeah, chance. Angie, yo, you are legendary. No you are legendary. Yeah. We have had, everybody struggle. You did that with ease. Like, you pushed the elevator button right there. Bro, she <laughs> ate that game, bro. That was crazy. Oh, that's funny. Um, oh, since, since we did Siblings by, by Dill, he told me uh, a story about that. His fans, because since you you have that New York accent, his fans were calling it the flicky song. Did he ever tell you that? No. The, the part when you say take a flick if I get tagged, for whatever reason, people didn't understand that. And they thought said take oh, a flicky, funny. like something like <laughs> flicky flicky. And people would go up to him and be like, yo, that song flicky flicky's hot. Like who, you know, who's rapping there? And he's like, I have no idea who you're talking about. Oh my God. And, and then he really realized, funny. and then he realized that they were talking about you saying the take a flick part. <laughs> wow that's funny wow take a flick is new york i guess maybe the way you say it the way you rap it that's maybe, really funny maybe yeah, all, cool. i don't know flicky flicky <laughs> take that flicky flicky i sound like a, a reggaeton song or something a flicky flicky um, <laughs> right. all right so man that that was that was easy that was a breeze all right so now now this part is all about you. We're going into the 101. We got questions. You have the answers. You are going to teach us. So Eli, you are up first with the first question. Angie, take us to school. All right, Angie. So within the Unstoppable EP and the singles leading up to it, you weave together aspects of pop, hip hop, and Latino music alongside your faith. So what was the process of merging all these elements together like? And, and did you find yourself wanting to lean into one facet of the creation process than the more than the other um <clears throat> to be honest this whole project was like a song for man uh we just that means like a mixed up stew like you just put everything up in there you knew that but you know um yeah it, we i met this producer named chris Liggio and yo we just vibed i went in the studio and he's just so eclectic and we just really started playing like kids and it was like okay some chords and then it was like he had some beats done or some drum patterns and yo we just let the moment and like i think me like my identity like it was this is the first project that i think that i was able to just be me like let everything out so there was no formula at all it just really worked out like that and kind of happy about it but yeah, I definitely, um, I always want to do a lot more Spanish, but I struggle with the language. But I mean, like, it's just, that's the music that touches my heart. Well, all of it, but yeah. That's awesome. Well, Angie, you also released a plethora of dope tracks in 2019 and 2020, like immediately after your Capital CMG signing. So you've got um, Fight Like, it started off with Fight Like a Man, then Lie to Me, Infatuation, uh, Like Gold, and then What I Had With You. None of those songs made it onto the project, but they're all referenced in the title track, or at least most of them are. So was there ever a version of this project that was that actually included those songs? No, no. 
um all so what what happened was though those five songs were supposed to be one project um and the name of that was supposed to be love in the garden uh, which is why they're all like lovey dub and cute except for by like a man um but yeah no completely separate world uh, unstoppable was is complete that was five days in in the pandemic like that's why it sounds exactly like it sounds Okay, so seeing that Larice Records project, Sin Veglinza, is most likely the first time any people heard Hispanic music before, what weight did that hold on you whenever you realized that you were selected? Um, I don't think I really pick up weight, <laughs> you know, unless I'm going to the gym. I think um, I was just excited and grateful um, to be a part of it. I don't, I think if I'm honest, I don't often realize what's happening or what I'm doing until after and then somebody's like did you know that this is kind of what you were part of I'm like oh no way but yeah man like now thinking about it that's yeah I didn't know but I'm grateful I'm so grateful um especially in Christian music to have that urban like Latin flair it's exciting to be a part of that Angie right speaking of flair growing up in the BX how influential was the rise of Puerto Rican artists like Big Pun and Fat Joe to your hip hop journey? So influential. Um, like I was, Fat Joe, Fat Joe, like I was saying earlier, Fat Joe, Terra Squad, all of them, Big Pun. I remember seeing his face on the buildings. You know what I mean? Like we was driving down the highway and you could see Jealous Ones still envy. Like it's like, that was, you feel me? That was like that, it was huge. It, it was a face that looked like mine. He was light-skinned, but he still talked, he talked like my big brother. Like it's, those artists seeing them come up big, even Cardi, like seeing all of that happen has been the biggest inspiration because it's like, yo, I, I could do it. They sound like me, they talk like me, they walk like me, they even move their hands like me. We could do this. Like. It, it was- but They ain't nice weird. as you though. They ain't nah. nice as you. I mean, no, they spit it, they spit it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I remember I remember the pushback people had for last year's Super Bowl when you saw Shakira and, and J Lo perform. And I can't help, mm. you know, thinking about how mild your Meet Me music video is in comparison to that. Yet I still saw some comments from people who like can't necessarily separate culture and intention of what you're doing. Mm. Uh so you know, I saw some of those comments going back and forth. Do you have do you have any thoughts on that? Not too many, but I I, uh, I learned from it. I listened. Um, and then I just, I still got to make a decision, right? And I think you you said it really well. Um, it's, it's, it is culture. It is identity. And, and there's just things that you kind of just, I think for me, um, they come with the territory. You know, I know that a Christian is not a blanketed term. And so I have to be okay with different beliefs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even within the word Christi Christian, we got the Protestant, we got the Catholic, we got the liberal, the, the, you know, the Pentecostal. And it's like, you just have to be okay with different perceptions because they're wearing different glasses and, and that's okay. And sometimes it's good, not all the time, often it's good to put on their glasses, see what they're seeing, understand them. And then say, okay, that's dope. I get why you think like that. I'll make some adjustments, but I still gotta move the way I gotta move. Yeah, next time you could just box in like a full like gown, right? Like oh, yeah, a full absolutely. flowy one mm -hmm. one piece gown with your hair up. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. You know what I'm saying? No earrings and don't shave your legs because depending. No, I, it's just it's wild. It's hard out here, but it is what it is. Cool. Well, Angie, I wanted to ask about the uh, unstoppable theme that's been emerging from everything from your philanthropic foundation, your merch line, and your previous track from 2015. They're all built around this word and this theme unstoppable so what's been inspiring uh your focus on the idea of being unstoppable for all these years now mm. so i i definitely had no idea what i was doing when i first said it um it was just like what's a better word than like legacy because that's what everybody says that's really what happened i was in the studio and i'm like what's the hook i'm a college kid and trying to figure out how to write raps and like all this stuff um but over time, it just kind of has become an identity um, that I think a lot of people can wear. Um, I didn't even want to name this project Unstoppable. That wasn't the name. Uh, but the whole team was like, like, that's the thing. Like, that's your thing. And, and it's real. You need to embrace that. And I was like, OK. Um, so to be honest, as, as often as I've been putting out this stuff and saying it, it is me processing through the idea and the identity of it, too. 
um, which is why the project it has this like triumphant name but if you really listen there's a lot of like sadness there's a lot of like struggle there's a lot of pain um but i think it's just it makes it truer it makes it more honest and that's what unstoppable is there, everything in the world is trying to make you stop and yet you just keep hitting you know um yeah i didn't know but i'm grateful Awesome. Well, as a follow-up question, I did want to ask a little bit about the Unstoppable Foundation because I know that you guys have done incredible work in PR and the Bronx, uh, but it seems like it might have been paused just a little bit because of COVID. So what does the work of the Unstoppable Foundation look like in a post-COVID world? Yeah, it's so weird. Um, it's, it's sad to me often. Like we had to close our after school. Uh, we miss our kids. But um, it's, it's taken on a whole new life. Like everything What's amazing is everything that we learned in Puerto Rico and the reason why this foundation really became a thing is now what we use here. So like, thank God we didn't really have to stop. We just had to pivot. Um, and what I'm grateful for is that I've always prayed to not be toxic, to not be the type of like person that's like, oh yeah, just give whatever you wanna give. It's like, no, what do people need? Um, and so for the first time in my city, we saw hunger, not for the, on a mass scale like that, not like, I've never seen that. I've never seen that many families come out for a food pantry. I've never seen. And so it was like, yo, that's the new pivot. That's the new turn. Let's teach financial literacy. Let's get foods in their, food in their hands. Let's uh, show them the programs that they have access to. Let's just be um, human. Um, so that's kind of what we've pivoted into. It's a lot less traction, but um, we're also still getting a lot of calls. The other day we were able to deliver over a hundred boxes of food um, in St. Mary's Church in the South Bronx. Uh, so it's cool. It's, it's different. And we're still helping. Thank God. Oh, that's, that's super dope. That's super dope. Because uh, congratulations to all your work you've been doing out there. Um, that is good. No talk. All the time. All the time. Um, speaking of which, on Crying in a Jaguar, you took a break from giving listeners bars and instead gave us a peek into your testimony dealing with your past struggles and behaviors. With mm -hmm. mental health being a big conversation piece these days, how important is it for you to be transparent when sharing those stories? And do you feel like the church is moving in the right direction in relation to those who wrestle with their mental health? I think the church is always trying to move in the right direction. I can never say whether they are or not. Um, but transparency, um, I think the pandemic has really made it, for me, made it so that I realized how important that was the whole time um mental health is huge i've had my struggles i have my struggles Men mental health is hard um fighting depression fighting anxiety fighting fears fighting worries um and i think we do a disservice if all we do is preach the good and preach the strength and preach that like when the word says that it's the weakness that showcases his strength um and so for me that's that's the privilege i get to be weak um, because I, I, I didn't know that I could be that. And I think this pandemic and everything that this year in the last, you know, over a year at this point has taught me is that, yo, I can be weak. And like, that's amazing because God is the one that's strong. So I'm, I'm just having more fun with, with telling people the truth so that they know, like this girl that talks about unstoppable all the time and says all these things was crying in the car. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's real. Yeah. I like that. That was beautiful. I wanted to ask, and this was actually, we one of our regular guys is Luke. Freddie's filling in for him, so I want to give Luke credit for this question. Um, I wanted to ask you about the, the hook of pain inside my eyes, particularly, you know, that line, screaming bloody murder, Columbine. Like, obviously, we didn't do any shows in 2020, but this isn't necessarily a line that you'd be at a show, and, you know, the whole crowd is is chanting that in mm -hmm. in you know, as, as a chorus. So if I could like peel that back a little bit, is this chorus an allusion to what happened at Columbine, like Cassie Bernal, Rachel Scott, you know, who were murdered for like their faith. Then you have that bridge part, you know, if I'm going to die, you know, and you have all of that going on. Is that sort of like a call to that? Yeah, all of it. It's all of it. Um, if I'm honest though, I think that song was, it's, it's dripping in pain, right? Which is why we just put the title, um, what it was. Um, I just, I thought of, you know, one of the most horrible things that we had experienced. Um, and there's so many, there's so many, but 
it was just one of those. And I wanted to explain the truth of that level of pain. I think uh, if I'm honest, I was talking about suicide. I was talking about the thing, the real battles that people are dealing with and how likened that is to those situations. The, the pain that people are enduring in their room, the pain that people are enduring in their homes and the pain of the people that survived that attack, like, right, the parents that are left behind the families. The, um, yeah. I just wasn't afraid to, to hit it on the head. The label was, but I wasn't. Angie, uh, I was the downer before when I transitioned us away from uh, Build a Bar into Trivia, but now I'm going to bring us right back up because you have a really cool allusion, a literary reference on Seven Gold Chains to Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist that I don't think everyone was going to get. So can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what the influence was of The Alchemist in creating this project? Like, what were there any themes or specific moments from the book that inspired the creation of the project? That book is one of my favorite books, like hands down, which is amazing. Um, yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole project can sit in the Alchemist. I think, like, I think it would have been in his headphones. Like, bro, I was like, I gotta keep moving. Like, um, yes, man. Like, seeing Melchizedek. Like, that, all right, yeah. Let me not geek out about the book itself. Um, let me get back to the question. I really love that book. I talk about it a lot. Yeah. No. Um. The, yeah. The whole son, Joseph to me was, I think that all, a lot of us are um, alchemists in a sense. And I think we, we even discount what that word means and what his journey was. And, and for me, I just wanted to get that story straight through. Like, it's going to be hard. You're going to go through failings. You're going to like, it's like, just read the book. That was my hope is like, yo, read the book, read about Joseph, read about everybody that's been through all these things, right? Like read about the jewelry that we have access to is kind of what that was about too. Seven gold chains was like supposed to be just dropping gems. Like, yo, this is a fact. This is a fact. This is a fact. Go check this. You you, you don't got faith here. Read this. Go talk about this. Like, ah, ah, ah. So, yeah. yeah. I hope that answered it. I got like tangent. Like before the pandemic, you mentioned on the album you were supposed to be on a list, a specific list, a list of persons on People magazine. How did that opportunity come about and what was the list gonna be? Now we got to make, we did make the list. Oh, you um, did make the list? I did, I was number nine on the Selena magazine. It was lit. I like saw myself in the airport and I was really tripping, it was fun. That happened. Um, And then the world was like, bye. We was like, oh, like we had shows. I had Sunfest. I was supposed to open up for Sean Paul and Lannis. I had- Wow. Like, man, it was supposed to be a boogie. Like it was supposed to be a whole, like the year was going up. Um. But yo, humbly, humbly, humble. I'm grateful, I, and it's hard to even say that, but I, but I, but it's true. I'm grateful because I, I, I think that you know the the path and the trajectory was just gonna lead me a little too far, um, and I'm grateful that God was like, yeah, let's just cut all this and like, do you know who you are anymore, baby girl? Okay, yeah, so, I think I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm right. I, I just want to say like I think that it's it's dope. Like even even in that for before everything getting cut off and, and God. Like God showing you, hey, you know, the world sees the value that I already placed inside of you. I don't want you to lose, regardless of any of this going away. And he lets you see that, say, hey, the mm. world ready to celebrate what I planted inside of you. And now even in the world is shutting down, I'm using that as fuel in this season for you to keep elevating. You know what I'm saying? I receive that. Thank you. Your track, Angels, originally had the Ready or Not sample in it from the Fugees. And now when I hear it, I can't unhear it from that first version that you that you sent me so was it as simple as as not being able to to clear the sample or was it you know was it something else no it was that simple it was it was and it was it was like timing too we were getting to speak to them and it was difficult and the deadlines hit all the masters were in and everybody was like what you gonna do and i was like we're gonna get the project out and yeah it was it was that simple unfortunately I, but i, I got plans I got plans. I, I remember you texting me, you're like, I'm sending you a new link, but the only thing that's different is the, the samples app from Angels. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> I'm, nah, I, I cried. I don't care. I cried. I was like, no, I cried. Because the first line, I wanted to get back in the studio. I'm like, no, because this is not the song that made me want to rap. And I'm that's not. That's what Eli, <laughs> Eli picked up on that. Yeah. 
when Justin oh, told tight. us that the sample didn't clear, I was so mad for the, for I've been talking about it the entire weekend. I'm mad for you. I'm sorry. Thank you, man. And Thank I, you. I went back to try to find those <laughs> the SoundCloud links that you sent me that had it, and because Cutright was like, "Well, share it," and I was like, "It was on SoundCloud," but they were you know deleted. You took it down, yeah, obviously. I'm a considerably new fan. I've known about you. I heard about you. And um, today I took a deep dive in your music. But I have a more um, general question. So you have like a pretty solid platform, um, you know, regular engagement and stuff on social media and on Instagram. So when that became a reality for you, what was your reaction like? How does it affect the way that you move through the social media lens? I still don't even think that it's a reality. I'm like, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do this world. This world is just like, I just, I'm just out here living, posting flicks, saying what I got to say and grateful when I get like DMs or comments or even emails or letters. I've gotten letters from some fans. Like that's just, it's, it's just dope to me. But what's crazy though is like, <clears throat> and I hope this answers the question, like the perception is different depending where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm, like, in my church or I'm, like, with a bunch of friends from, like, that are local, they're, like, oh, my God, like, you got 30,000 people. Oh, my God. But, like, if you're sitting in a real meeting with, like, all these brands or whatever, they're, like, mm, 30,000. What's up? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's all perspective. And, and I, I'm praying that this is true. But I'm praying to, like, just, like, like not that I'm not grateful for it the people i'm praying to just be cool for the people to see the individual over the big number no most definitely um that makes sense because i think i heard i think it was either one of your older songs or it was newer but you said something like this ain't social media so i can already like understand the approach that you have to those kinds of things and making sure that you're not like okay. immersed so for sure you told me that this was the album you had to make to then go and make this next album that's coming. Mm. Could you could you explain that? Or am I making that up? Like, did you tell me that? No, no, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Because, um, this, like I said, this album kind of showed me uh, the diversity, but like the, what I found fun about this project was it showed me that I could go, you know, all these places. I could do the pop vibe. I could do the Latin. But it, what I love is that it showed me my, like, my cadence. It showed me that frequency line that's like, yeah, you could do all these things, but like, you will never, this is your your norm. And so now I'm excited to be like, okay, boom. I know that I'm always gonna have these certain qualities. Um, and so I'm excited to keep kind of finessing and sharpening. Like, I feel like I know what I'm making. Like, I think before it was like a, a big old brick of clay and it's like, all right, chop this side. What is it now? All right, this. And now it's finally like, oh, this is turning into like a whole sculpture. Oh, okay, boom. So now I was like more precision, more identity, more confidence. Um, yeah. Even the new stuff that we're like just demoing is like fun for me. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, it's really, that's what I wanted to say. That's exactly how I wanted to say it. And that doesn't always happen. Like, as a writer, you're kind of like, huh, I don't know, said it. And now I'm like, I said that. The last thing would be, is there anything that you want to say or add uh, about what you're doing, the project, anything that we didn't get to? Definitely excited about new things in the work, but um, I got some features. I got some friends that I've been, and you, you know, I don't really have a lot of features or haven't done a lot of that. So I'm dumb hyped because the email literally just came in today. Um, the, the people that I wanted are on. So we're definitely prepping to drop some fun. The truth is stay unstoppable. Remember that that's a decision, not just a thing that happens. Um, love it, love is an emotion, but it's also a choice. So is the identity and the belief um, that you're unstoppable. Some days you'll feel it and other days you'll just have to be it. That was Angie Rose. Angie Rose run the gauntlet of games. She run the gauntlet of the 101 questions. She slayed everything in her path. She was like a conquistador that just destroyed Pen Game 101. Uh, thank you so much. Unstoppable is out now. You should check it out. She's got a whole bunch of other great stuff coming. Angie Rose, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Wait, no, stop, stop, oh, stop. Okay. I thought of something. Okay. Right. Something. Angie, let me ask you a question, Angie. <laughs> uh, yes, right. sir. When they pay you your chicken, when they pay you your chicken, Angie, is it a rose compoyo? <laughs> what? 
When they, they pay me my chicken, nah, it's fried chicken. Is it considered a rose? rose? Cause your name is Angie Rose. A rose. Your chicken. A rose. Oh, wow. Are oh, you? Did you get that the first time? Wow. You got bars, yeah. dog. You put that in the song. I'm gonna have to give you a point. Right. song. It's fine. I got it because yeah. he does this every episode. <laughs> and he's like, wait, wow. wait. And I keep I keep forgetting like, to like I keep forgetting to write it in like the inevitable joke before every single The goodbye. inevitable joke. That is wonderful. Angie, we'll we'll Thank let you go. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Bless me. Peace. You too. Peace. All right, yeah. Bye. All right. That was Angie Rose, who absolutely came on here and she took no prisoners. She absolutely killed Pen Game 101. Um, fellas, I'm gonna kick it around to you guys. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts on on this episode. Man, Angie Rose is such an incredible rapper, such an incredible artist, such an incredible philanthropist. That Puerto Rican chick from the Bronx who loves Jesus and hip hop has by far demolished the expectations of this Puerto Rican dude from Brooklyn who loves Jesus and hip hop. So really uh, honored that she came on with us and really excited to see what she's got, ooh, what she's got going on next. Well, as a Queens brother who loves Jesus and hip hop, yeah, you know I mean, since we out here repping boroughs and stuff out here, yeah, you know I mean, I felt like that Bronx sister who loved Jesus and hip hop most definitely came and did her thing today, you know what I'm saying? As I said, the energy, the life, the, the vibrancy, I mean, it was cool and it, it felt like a conversation. I think this might be, might be one of the best episodes we've had. Oh, ooh, I think so, I think so. Mm. Like you heard me say in the um, episode, like I'm new, but a fairly new fan. So, you know, diving in her music today, I was already blown away. Then with her character, her energy that she brought um, and the way that she navigated through like freestyling, that just, that was wild. Um, so like I will show you where the picks are. Like that was that was insane. People don't really do word flips and freestyles because people can't think that critically sometimes. So um that was that was great. I really was just messing with that. Overall, great episode. So and that'll do it from the Pen Game 101 crew. We had Eli, we had Cut Right, we had Freddie making his second appearance. Uh Ooh. when was your last time you were here? You were at Holvey. Yeah, it was like and, October, uh, man. And uh <laughs> much. Much love to Luke, who thought that uh, whatever he was doing was actually better than what we were doing here, but he missed He missed. Traitor, a really, he you missed, let me down. He was wrong. He missed a really good episode. But uh, guys, girls, everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's see if our three-peat of women in CHH is over. Wande, AI, Angie Rose, who will we have next? I don't know, but be sure to tune in next time. Peace.